The war-weary city of Minute shone under the rays of the rising sun as Master Mechanic Marie of Caerlin rode to the top of a ridge that looked down a long slope toward the once busy port. She wore the dark jacket of a mechanic, even though that guild had long since banished her. Marie's horse shifted restlessly as a dozen cavalry troopers in blue uniforms with brightly shining cuirasses, sabers at their sides, and lances poised ready for use rode up next to her, one of them holding a staff from which flew the square banner of the new day, bright blue with the many-pointed golden star in the center. A storm threatened the world of Demeter, a storm carrying winds of war, riot, and chaos, born of and fueled by the rage and frustrations of the people who had been forced to serve the wills of the great guilds for centuries. It was a storm which had begun in Tay, breaking the kingdom into anarchy. Marie was determined to stop that storm, and she would counter it beginning here in Tay, where it had claimed its first victims. She had scarcely quieted her mount when three more rode up, two of them cavalry in the dark green uniforms of Tay, one of those carrying the banner of that kingdom, gold and green. The third wore mage robes. Despite the tension riding inside her, Marie smiled at the sight of him. How does everything look? How does everything look? Are we ready to attack? Major Lane of Eris gave her a slight smile, which might have seemed a very restrained greeting in anyone but a mage. From a mage, trained to avoid any display of emotion, the gesture was almost flamboyant. All is well. General Flynn is deploying your foot soldiers to the west, and Princess Sien is moving Tay's forces into position to the east. We are already blocking the northern side of the city. Marie looked back down the slope at two hundred cavalry concealed behind the ridge and waiting for the order to advance. Waiting for her order. We've come a very long way in six months, haven't we, my mage? I never expected that we'd be retaking Minute this quickly. A rattle of hooves announced the arrival of General Flynn and a small group of staff officers. Your army is ready to advance, lady, he announced, saluting her with a flourish. Her army. That still felt unreal. In the half year since forging an alliance with the sole surviving member of the royal family of Tay, Princess Sien, and setting up a base at Pacta Servanda to the south, thousands of volunteers had made their way individually and in small groups to join the forces of the Daughter of Jewels, she who was foretold as the one who would overthrow the great guilds which had enslaved the world of the Mater for all of its history. Some of those volunteers had been taught to use mechanic tools to construct more and better devices than the Mechanics Guild had ever permitted. The rest had been eager to fight to free their world. Without the help of professionals like General Flynn, Marie never would have been able to mold them into an army. An army that was already equipped with rifles of a sort never before seen in this world. There were less than two hundred of those rifles as of yet, but they gave Marie's army a tremendous advantage in firepower in a world where the mechanics killed limited every other fighting force to only a few repeating rifles. Marie raised her far seers, grumbling under her breath as her horse shifted again, making it hard to focus on the waters just offshore of the city. This particular mare seemed to have an instinctive feel for when to move at just the wrong moments. Her fleet was there. Several large sailing ships also flying the banner of the new day, blockading the port to keep any of the warlords trapped inside Minute from escaping by sea. Closer in, nearly twenty boats flying the flag of Tay guarded against any escape attempt along the coast by the small-scale pirates who had infested the city in the decades since the kingdom of Tay had fallen into anarchy. All we need to wait for now is whatever the mages on their rocks can tell us. From here... Even through the far seers, the towers and spires of Minute appeared to be in decent shape, only a few truncated by the loss of their upper portions. Ari wondered how intact they really were. Different sections of the city bore the scars of old fires, burned-out buildings still trailing tiers of soot from windows broken ten or twenty years ago. Other areas of Minute appeared to be disconcertingly untouched but that was probably because the Farseers couldn't spot the signs of neglect and decay from this distance. 